Over the last 70 odd years, we've seen so many technological advancements on the visual side of broadcasting. And even though content is captured and presented in higher detail than ever before, companies are still pushing the envelope when it comes to resolution. However, audio capture for broadcast is kind of another story. Not much has changed in the last 70 years. The predominant tools used are shotgun and parabolic mics, particularly when it comes to sports. Shotgun mics have been around since the 1950s, and the idea of using parabolic collectors for sound goes back to the theaters of Roman times. But Shaw realized they may be onto something with some of the technology that they've developed for their conferencing systems, and so they refined it some more. And you know what? It turns out they might just have upset the apple cart and redefined the way broadcast audio is captured. Introducing the DCA901, the first digital array microphone tailored for broadcast. Designed to provide an even more complete audio capture that brings viewers closer to the action than ever before, the DCA901 uses 78 MEMS microphones in a planar array to create eight digitally steerable lobes. So if you want me to cut to the chase, you could think about this one unit being equivalent to eight shotgun mics ready and able to provide up to 180 degrees of coverage. The answer is in the combination of the planar microphone array and some fancy DSP. First, the array. A planar array is where multiple microphones are arranged in a flat, two-dimensional grid or pattern. The name planar is representative of this configuration's ability to capture a spatial sound field from across the plane of a surface. So, all of the microphones in the array are capturing audio from everywhere within the hemisphere in front of the microphone all of the time. From here, the captured audio is sent into some highly specialized frequency and time-centered DSP algorithms for beamforming, which localizes specific areas of the plane and creates the eight lobes. Since the beamforming is done digitally, the lobes can be steered or positioned using the web-based GUI. This means the A1 engineer can configure the DCA901 to use as many or as little of the lobes needed, and with the Units 12, Dante, or AES67 outputs that are available via a single Ethernet cable, the lobes can be assigned to individual output channels and be brought up on a console directly or assigned to the mono or stereo auto mix, or both. And there's also a PFL mix that can be helpful for pinpointing any mix challenges, such as that audience member who cheers just a little too obnoxiously. Now you just heard me mention auto mix, of which there are two in this unit, one mono and one stereo, and any channel can be assigned to one or both. These auto mixers can be used to simplify output and operation downstream when the outputs are brought up on the console. So for instance, in a basketball situation, a single DCA901 could be mounted under the hoop stanchion and configured for one lobe focused on the free throw line and two on either side of the key to fan out and cover across the three point line with two more lobes being used to cover directly under the hoop at the basket. So now a single DCA901 is providing all critical play audio of free throws, three pointers, drives, dunks, and inbounding for the front court which can all be assigned to the mono auto mixer, which will follow the action and then be brought up on a single fader on the console versus seven faders. Just like Shure's audio conferencing systems, there's also a signal to noise energy based auto steer function, which will automatically snap audio pickup to the active lobe. But just bear in mind that because this works with the unit continually measuring for the loudest sound against the background noise, the array really needs a quiet environment for this to work best. Other onboard DSP includes compression, delay, and parametric EQ. At this stage, these effects are only available on the auto mix outs, with the exception of the parametric EQ, which is available on all direct outputs, as well as the auto mixes. And there's also noise reduction included. You'll also find a preset bank with eight slots, two of which are hard-coded. One of these has seven channels fanned out at a hard spread, and the second is a 5.1 specific preset with outputs fanned out for correct 5.1 capture. I should also mention that all of the DCA901's audio output is time aligned in the DSP, so everything maintains phase coherency, which is a huge bonus for immersive audio capture like 5.1. Well, they say that you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but at 100 years old, Shure seems to be defying that logic as they've created a new product category with the DCA901. 
and it truly is an innovative product that simplifies and yet elevates audio capture in broadcast environments, all while streamlining deployment. I'm very curious to see what other innovation comes through the development of this product category, but in the meantime, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, this has been Andrew from the B&H Pro Audio YouTube channel, reminding you to always remember audio. Introducing the new Payboo credit card. You can save the tax or choose special financing for your purchases made on your Payboo credit card. It's easy. The new Payboo card, same funny name, your choice of exclusive benefits. Apply today.